Hey yo, welcome to today's video. Today we'll be unboxing DJI's RS3 Mini. I'll also be showing you guys a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to set this thing up. So let's get started. I was debating whether I should get the regular RS3, but I think the Mini one should be just enough. According to DJI, the max weight is 4.4 pounds, so I definitely think I should be underneath that. The price for this gimbal is 369 bucks and has an ultra lightweight design coming in at 1.75 pounds or 795 grams. It's got Bluetooth shutter control. It uses the third generation RS stabilization algorithm. It has a native vertical shooting mode and a 1.4 inch full color touchscreen. Now let's check out what's inside. So straight up we see the gimbal. Let's move this onto the side and see what else is inside the box. Here's that wonderful paperwork we love to see. Here we got an accessories box. It's filled with a tripod stand to attach on the bottom of the gimbal, which can also be used for extra grip space. We also got a USB A to USB C charging cable. They provide you with two screws, one with the handle to screw in onto the quick release plate. And here's that quick release plate. And they also give you an L-shaped USB C cable. Now that that's out of the way, let's take a look at the gimbal. Alright, since I'm new to this, we'll be taking it step by step. Let's take it from the top. First step, let's put on that tripod stand. Next, we gotta start unlocking the gimbal. After unlocking it, you could swivel this part out. And after it's out that original position, you wanna make sure that you click that lock button again, just so that it locks into place on this position. Here's the next part of the gimbal where you unlock. And those grooves show other spots to lock it. There are a total of three different grooves, so just make sure to lock it in the middle one. Now let's go ahead and attach the quick release plate. I'll be using the screw with the little handle on it. You can use either one though. So before you screw it in, just make sure the plate itself is all the way towards the back. The raised part on the other side should tell you when to stop. And just make sure you really tighten it. Next, loosen this lever right here and then slide your camera onto the gimbal. After that, tighten that lever back up and you're good. Alright guys, now it's time to test the weight of this thing. Okay, this is pretty damn heavy, I'm not gonna lie. I could definitely see myself using this with one hand, but two will definitely be easier. Now once that's done, we gotta balance out the gimbal. To do this, you gotta unlock this part of the gimbal and then try to balance it. Oh wait, but first you gotta unlock this little lever here. So to balance it, you're gonna have to move this up and down to find the sweet spot. And that's why those numbers are there, to help you align it perfectly. And once you find that sweet spot, just make sure to lock down that lever. Next, we gotta balance the camera as if it was facing upwards. So you want the camera lens to face directly up. Similarly to the previous step, you wanna unlock this lever and then slide the gimbal back and forth to see which spot is the best. Make sure you lock those levers so that it doesn't slide after you find that perfect spot. After you got those two parts balanced, your camera should be able to have a full rotation without it moving around or going up or down. You should be able to hit every position and stay in that position. Next, unlock this part of the gimbal to continue on with the balancing. Again, unlock this lever and then find that sweet spot. Slide the gimbal left and right to find that good positioning. You'll be able to tell if it's balanced if the camera doesn't go at an angle like this. And don't forget, once you're done, lock the lever. Next, unlock this part of the gimbal. So for this part, you want the camera to stay balanced if you were to tilt the gimbal at an angle. Let's tilt this gimbal, and you see, it's moving. You don't want that to happen. And once you figure that out, this is the result. No crazy movements when you tilt it. And now we got the gimbal all balanced. Let's take a look at the app. Once you turn on the gimbal, you should be able to find it right on the app. And then type in the password. Then make sure you do agree and then sign into a Ronin account. Next up, follow the steps on the quick start guide. For the balance test, you gotta tilt it at an angle and then let it do its thing. If something went wrong, just rebalance it. Now let's connect the camera to the gimbal using Bluetooth. Make sure Bluetooth remote control is on. Click on perform new pairing. Then on the gimbal, just go to Bluetooth settings and you should find the camera ready to go. Just quickly allow the pairing and you're good. On the app, you'll find a checklist to make sure everything's ready. And if your camera doesn't allow Bluetooth connection, just use the L-shaped USB-C cable. Now let's run through the app real quick. Since we already done the balance test, we can move over to motor parameters. We'll be working on the advanced tab. The basic tab only lets you change stiffness settings. 
So basically these settings deal with how the motor compensates for all the weight distribution. Before you let it auto-tune, you gotta make sure all the locks are unlocked. So once that's done, go ahead and auto-tune. And it even tells you to unlock it again, just in case. And now just let it do its thing. And now what I believe it's doing is trying to see how much power to put into each of the motors. Alright, calibration successful. Now you can see all those numbers have changed. Actually, that was the auto tuned for the stiffness. Now we just gotta do strength. I thought it was gonna do both, but I guess you just have to do it separately. The numbers didn't really change that much, but at least it did something. Those two buttons on the bottom are for changing user profile settings and the status setting. In the status section, you'll see the checklist we saw earlier and then some calibration settings. And now if you go over to the create section, you'll see all the different modes you can play with when you shoot some video. And also, if you have a Raven Eye, you could connect it right underneath the create section. But since I don't have one, we'll just skip that. The RS3 Mini is also equipped with a NATO port to install accessories like lights, briefcase handles, and even monitors. So I went ahead and bought a NATO clamp from Amazon to attach my RGB light. I knew this was going to add a little weight, but it's not too bad. Anyways guys, there you go. I hope setting this up went smoothly for everyone. Also, if you guys haven't, go check out my fully kitted camera setup. The link will be in the description. And make sure you guys stay tuned because I'll be opening up something cool next week. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like and sub and click on one of these. See ya.